We head to Sprague first to catch up with a great youth program here in Wellesley called Straight Out of School Sports. Founded last year by community investors, Executive Director Joe Roberts, supported as always by well-known Wellesley resident Chris Cavallarano, both realized how important it is to provide after-school opportunities for kids. 2014 kicked off its first year, and it was a huge success. So looking to build on that even more this year, though the name may have changed, the focus remains the same. You know, a lot of kids basically, the second the school day is over, are walking around on their cell phones, on their computers, really not doing much productive. They need physical activity. It's good for them, helps them like connect with one another, you know, in person, face to face, as opposed to through a screen. So it's really all about just getting the kids out here on a ball field, in the gym, running around, having fun, and getting to know each other in a good way. It's, our program's available to all Wellesley Middle School students. Um, we're trying to get funding where we don't have to ask for any kind of registration fee to cover the cost of the program. We're not there yet, but we're working on it. And, uh, you know, we, we are constantly trying to get as many kids as possible to get out there and just come out and have fun playing ball. Uh, we definitely need more fields. That's a huge project. Hopefully we can get what we need there. That'll really open up more programs down here. We really don't have room for a lot of these kids to do stuff. And then after that, we've got to focus on getting some gym space. We've got a shortage of gym space in this town. Not as many people know about that. And uh, I think that'll be next down the line for the town to look into. So the two best teams of this flag football league would meet up yet again here for the second annual Bucket Bowl. Notre Dame versus Boston College. So many kids came to play, to have fun, and honestly, it was tough keeping up with them on camera as a ton of kids just wanted to hurry back to the line and run another play. A score was kept to see which team would get the coveted bucket, so let's check in on some of the action. Boston College holds a 25-14 lead early on, but Notre Dame comes fighting back with these two scores, as the game continues to be a close one here. So we fast forward to only seconds to go here, and the Eagles would secure the victory here on this touchdown score. And the bucket and the win would go to Boston College. But what a cold day it was to be outside, that's for sure. But that's what made playing football on this day even better. Sure, you could be warm inside the house, playing video games, on your iPad, but the after-school opportunities these kids now have in Wellesley are available to anyone, boy and girl. So turn that TV off and use that iPad for a good reason. Go to communityinvestors.net to register. Go outside and have some fun. Just play. The opportunities are endless. Yeah, you know what? Get outside. You know what? Today's 30 degrees and we're still out here playing football, catching some picks. I mean, <laughs> I mean, just running the football. It's, it's so fun. You got to try it. Um, I'm Will Sullivan. I've been doing it for two years. I'm a seventh grader. Alex said earlier, it's 30 degrees and we're still out playing. I don't care if it's negative 10, I'm still gonna be out here. In, in short sleeves, yeah, in short sleeves. And, but I am bolted up, but it is, it's, it's amazing, even though it's very cold out. Definitely, definitely, it's been great. I mean, it's 30 degrees and windy out here. And these kids are, we had, you know, 40 kids out here playing ball, which is, that's like a total success. And it shows you, like, if you give kids good activities that are fun for them, they will come down here and do it. Come down and try it out. We're definitely, like, if a kid shows up, we're just like, you know, we're, we're, we don't really care if he signed up. We're just like, come on out, try it out. If you have a good time, then, you know, we'll, we'll get you to register just for the, uh, you know, liability and all that. But, like, just come out and try it out, and they'll have a good time, and they'll come back. So our next program coming up is dodgeball this winter, which we're really looking forward to. It's the first time we've been able to do dodgeball after school at the middle school. It's going to be Friday afternoons, right after school, till 3.15, and uh, we expect to have a bunch of kids in there. It's like the best end of the week activity. The kids run around, have a lot of fun. They work all that stress out by, that they have by the end of the week, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we look forward to having that coming up next. This is very nice because I know they have, I know they coach and everything. Like, this is amazing because I've never had this in uh, elementary school. And then when you bring it to the middle school, uh, it's just so amazing. Yep, it's all because Joe run the whole thing. Sully's mom got some good pics, I bet. I bet some good pictures. You know what? It's, without him, wouldn't have this. So it's great. 
So we continue with more exciting Wellesley sports as we head to Needham's Memorial Field for the annual Powder Puff Classic in a battle of the Needham Seniors versus the Wellesley Seniors. Without question, this is something every girl coming in as a senior looks forward to all school year. Add to the fact that it's also a chance to play against your rivals in Needham. Yeah, everyone on both sides is pumped and ready to go. First quarter, Needham gained solid yards on their opening drive. But a great defensive play by Raiders' Katie Williamson quickly changes that as Williamson brings down her own deflection on this pass for the key interception, stopping a Rockets scoring threat. So Raiders get their first chance at offense on the day and a solid run after catch by Kylie Noonan gets pushed back by a penalty. But next snap, quarterback Carly Boyle fakes it to Emma Ivey and hands off to Sophie Tartello instead, completely fooling Needham. And Tartello runs free down the sidelines until she's brought down at the Rockets' 27-yard line. Great run there for sure as it's now second down on the 23. Carly Boyle throws a perfect pass to Sophie Vernon, but Needham's defender deflects just enough to glance off Vernon's fingertips. And falls incomplete. Wellesley would then turn the ball over on downs here as they were able to move the chains, but the drive falls short. Second quarter defense on both sides continues to be showcased here as Rockets quarterback runs into a wall called Kylie Noonan and goes nowhere. And their drive gets halted as well. Minutes later, after another turnover on downs, Raiders come out throwing. Carly Boyle gets a ton of air on this deep 30-yarder, but it gets picked off, unfortunately, on the deflection by the Rockets. So both teams get their chances as they move the ball downfield, but as the first half comes to a close, nothing has come out of it, and we're still locked in on zeros. So the third begins as it's anyone's game to take here, and a solid return by Sophie Vernon on the kickoff brings the ball up near midfield. So it's a first down here for Wellesley and Emma Ivey takes the handoff with a ton of speed, runs free down the sideline for a Raiders first down and more at the Rockets 36 yard line. Fourth down would come though and Carly Boyle would just miss connecting with Kylie Noonan on this pass. And so another solid drive by Wellesley is cut short. But this back and forth battle continues here as Needham gives the ball right back on another pass deflected by a Raider. This time Kaylee Harris comes down with the pick and that would be the second interception of the game for Wellesley. So there may not be any score yet here but we are definitely seeing some great highlights by these seniors. So Raiders look to take advantage of this turnover as Emma Ivey takes the handoff with great blocking ahead is just gone. But Ivey's excitement is cut short as it won't be six for the Raiders as one of Ivey's blue flags remains at the 25-yard line. So no touchdown here for Wellesley. Second down though, Carly Boyle again with a deep pass. It's there for the taking, but it drops just through Kylie Noonan's hands. And another opportunity slips away for Wellesley. Needham uses that as momentum though and just missing a deep Cove touchdown run here. Rockets go right back to the ground. Kathleen Rizzo brings it home for the first six points of the game. Rizzo goes for the Gronk spike here and so an unsportsmanlike penalty backs up the spot for the extra point kick. No worries though as deep Cove's kick is on target, has the distance and more. Needham holds the 7-0 lead here in the fourth. So deeper into this final quarter we go with time not on Wellesley's side. Carly Boyle goes deep once again and under pressure somehow throws a perfect spiral, finding Sophie Vernon who reels in a clutch catch, keeping Raiders' hopes alive. Wellesley's offense would then draw Needham offsides on a key fourth down that earns them instead a new set of downs. But the remaining seconds to this game are quickly ticking away as Kylie Noonan brings down another catch, but after this incompletion, time should be stopped on the field, but it's not. And as the Raiders are quickly asking for the ball to line up for another play, the refs blow the final whistle, and that is the end of the game. As Wellesley is stopped so close to the goal line, Needham holds on for the victory, earning themselves the trophy once again for the fifth year in a row. The winning team gets to keep the coveted trophy for the whole year, so for now, it stays with Needham. But at the end of the day, the zero on the scoreboard for Wellesley is somewhat misleading as this team moved the ball downfield extremely well. Seniors Emma Ivey, Kylie Noonan, Sophie Vernon, and quarterback Carly Boyle definitely stood out, leading the way here and giving Wellesley the best possible chance to win. Though these Raiders weren't able to get on the scoreboard, what a hard fought and fun game to watch. Final here, Needham seven, Wellesley nothing. Saving the best for last, what better place to have the oldest high school rivalry in the nation and to be played here in the oldest ballpark on Yawkey Way.
Needham Rockets and Wellesley Raiders would meet for the amazing 128th time in a once-in-a-lifetime shot here at Fenway Park. What a feeling it must have been for every player to run out of the Red Sox dugout onto a now transformed football field with the Green Monster as the best backdrop you could ever ask for. Both teams would come in here led by two great head coaches. For Needham, it would be Dave Duffy, and for Wellesley, Jesse Davis. What an honor, what an opportunity for everyone to be a part of. This huge crowd of 10,000 plus would not be disappointed either, as this was an exciting close match from the opening kickoff to the very last whistle. So let's go to the action as Needham quickly strikes here in the first. After forcing a reader three and out, it's third down on their own 33-yard line as Rockets quarterback Sam Foley in the I formation takes the snap and lost it perfectly to a wide open John Andre. And Andre is finally brought down at about the Wellesley 26. John Andre would then bring it home on second down here as Foley rolling to his left just avoids Grant Kosikis and connects with his star receiver for six points. Needham's extra point would go wide though, so for now, it stays 6-0 Rockets. With the opening quarter ticking away, Raiders though kickstart a scoring drive of their own. Griffin Morgan reels in a much needed catch for a first down at the 33 yard line. And then Jake Moen completes another pass to Morgan, and Griffin Morgan breaks away from a tackle, dragging a defender with him just inside the 20 yard line. And the Raiders would get their first opportunity here in the red zone. Running back Sam McGee would earn some tough yardage here on the ground with back to back runs, and Wellesley is close to the five yard line as the opening quarter comes to a close. Seconds into the second, Jake Moen completely fakes out Mike D'Oliva and runs in untouched for the touchdown. What a great move by Moen there as the Raiders can now take the lead for the first time, 7-6. An inching closer to halftime, it looks like Wellesley has momentum. Jake Moen on the quarterback rollout connects with Brennan Dolan for a key first down. Then another pass and catch to Dolan keeps his drive alive for the Raiders with less than a minute to go here in the first half. So it's third down and four on the 21. And under center, Jake Moen keeps it and gets some solid yards running out of bounds to the 10. Moen gets tackled late out of bounds right in front of a ref, but there would be no flag on the play. So a couple plays later now at the three yard line, Needham's defense is a game changer here. Putting pressure on Jake Moen and forces Moen to make a throw he didn't want to. Captain Joe Goetzke steps in front and picks it off. And Goetzke has nothing but 97 yards of daylight ahead of him. He goes all the way for a crushing pick six. His time runs out of the second quarter. What a kick to the gut for Wellesley as they look ready to add to their lead. Instead, Raiders now face a 12-7 deficit, wondering what just happened. But we still got two more quarters to go, so let's fast forward to the fourth year as the score remains 12-7 Needham. Wellesley eats up a ton of clock as more than seven minutes tick away on this drive. That would start all the way back at their own 25 yard line. A huge run by Jake Moen cutting in and around defenders gives Raiders a first down and more. Seconds later at Needham's 29, Grant Kosikis takes it all the way down the sidelines inside the 10 yard line. And we've got a first and goal as tension builds with Wellesley so close to possibly retaking the lead. But as Needham's goal line stand prevented a score earlier in the game, with their defense stuff Wellesley yet again. Well, still with under four minutes to play, it's now fourth and goal. Sam McGee takes the handoff and tries as hard as he can, but McGee is brought down at the two yard line. So close, but Needham's defensive stop is clutch. Rockets defense stands their ground. With under a minute to play, Wellesley somehow still has a chance maybe pull off that go-ahead and ultimately game-winning score here. Both seconds to spare, just enough of this deep pass to Griffin Morgan disrupts what could have been the game-changer for Wellesley. So now it's the last chance here for Raiders, but Jake Moen's deep pass again is batted down, and Needham holds on in this nail-biter of a game, beating Wellesley for the second year in a row. But as the Rockets have their reasons to celebrate as they take home the Centennial Trophy yet again, these Raiders still have everything to be proud of. Though a loss here at Fenway is tough, what a way for these talented 16 seniors to end their high school careers. Very few people right now and in the years to come can say they played high school football at Fenway Park. That is a memory every Needham and Wellesley football player can always have. And I think we can all say, this is one they will never forget.
Final here. Needham 12, Wellesley 7. Thanksgiving football officially brings an end to fall season sports. But there will be plenty of Raiders action coming your way shortly as winter sports season begins. If you missed any games or highlights, make sure to follow Wellesley Public Media for all the Raiders coverage you need. Check us out on demand at wellesleymedia.org, our YouTube channel at Wellesley Public Media, right here on Comcast 9 and Verizon 39.